Hey guys, uh, in this video I am cast netting for herring at Point Richmond in San Francisco Bay. Um, and uh, this is my, I think my one, two, the fourth, uh, fourth successful herring um, trip. And I'm gonna tell you kind of my experience and kind of what um, worked for me as, as a beginner. <laughs> Uh, there's guys here that have probably been coming back year after year and we're casting into this uh, this this pier has uh, obviously two sides the other side is open and this side is kind of tight with these snags and tangles and the reason we're casting or we're fishing this side is because the other side it was just a little bit too crowded I mean it wasn't super crowded but there was enough you know, people kind of space just in you know, evenly along the edge um, so it just felt a little bit too cramped and there weren't there wasn't anybody fishing here for obvious reasons um, you could see some old cast nets uh, some of the equipment uh, like first of all is this uh, cast net itself it's this one's a, a made by South Bend um, it cost I think it cost me like $14 from through Amazon uh, it's a three foot radius, a three feet radius, and um, there, you know, I would highly recommend getting one like this, just a three foot radius, uh, six feet diameter, um, especially if you're beginning, like myself. Um, it took me a couple of tries, several tries actually, to learn to figure out how to throw this right. Uh, my my daughter, my twelve year old daughter, was able to cast like. Her second time <laughs> throwing it, uh, she she's actually much better than I am. Um, though I am getting better just because I've been throwing it so often. Uh, so again, this this cast net is really easy to use because it's small. I do have a I did get a, a larger net, a six foot uh, radius, so 12, 12 feet in diameter, and that was. Much, definitely much harder to throw, uh, much heavier. Um, I'm still, you know, I'm still learning on that, uh, and your arm gets so much more tired uh, throwing that that burning net like that. With you no, know, with being a bigger net, it needs more weight. Um, and so, yeah, my arm would get super tired. And then uh, the nice thing about this smaller net is your arm doesn't get as tired. Um, and another good thing is that uh, you can s reset this net and throw it again much faster than the larger net. The larger net just takes so much more time to kind of set up and you know, get ready and untangle for and, and throw. Um, so you know, he here's a good view of the of the area. And right where I'm gonna throw here, my friend uh, Jack, who I'm fishing with, lost his net uh, just that day. His larger net, right, just just probably a little bit beyond where I tossed mine, because um, there there are a bunch of uh, structure, just the I guess the piling that have been cut. Um, some are some you can see, and obviously some you can. I got mine stuck on the barnacle. Uh, on, on that piling, um, so you, you got to be careful. Uh, and uh, another piece of equipment is this yellow line that's attached to the black line, that, which is part of the uh, cast net. Um, I had to lengthen it by about about ten feet, just because the water was about ten feet down from where I was standing. Um, um, probably not quite ten feet, but tall enough uh, so you just wanted to want to let the uh, net fall all the way down to the bottom and you know it wouldn't reach um, from up where we were standing so again adding just a little bit of line now now some guys will I see a lot of guys tying the end to their uh, ooh, look at that seal tying the end to the um, uh, to the post here but I found that you know that really got in the way. Like I would hit it, or you know, we get tangled on the on the net as I was throwing. So you know, some people can do it, and you know, I I just can't. 
um, the, the seals here, uh, there is a bunch of seals, but they didn't really, at least at the beginning, they didn't really bother, you know, bother you. They, you know, they, they would follow the net and that was about it. And until later on when they started actually grabbing the net. Now, uh, just the other week when I was uh, cast netting up in, in Marin um, at Paradise, uh, the, the seals there would actually grab the net and, and pull and tear tear the net up. In fact, uh, the, I thought I'd lost the net to the seal because they, they tore it up and just ripped it to shreds. And um, I thought, well, I'm time to get a new net. <laughs> it was the larger net. Uh, it was new. It was like it was like the first day of actually using it, and um, I ended up sewing it up back up and spending some time working on it. Uh, anyhow, the seals here didn't seem to be grabbing at the net until later on. So I think they're they're starting to learn that learn that behavior, and and I think we're going to see more and more of that. Uh, this day, no, the fishing was okay. It was uh, no. I, we were still having fun, you know, it was, it was still a lot of fun, but and I, I had been here the night before with my kids and had a blast. Uh, the place was much more crowded. Um, everybody was catching and uh, we we're hauling up probably twice as much fish than today and it never slowed down. And here we had slow times and then we'd pick up again. Um, there's a decent one. The larger net was uh, now you do when when you're tossing a lot of fish you do catch more more fish, uh, but you know these small nets are 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 good. No, you you can you can fill up a uh, fill up your tub or bucket or you know, ice chest, and they're easier to kind of aim like right there. <laughs> I just missed that piling right there. You know, there's these other you know, snags, like you see the two nets that were lost right there. Um, and so we're, I was throwing my net just like in between the two nets down there, um, just grazing, grazing them. <laughs> you know, I've tossed it so many times, I just got better and better at it. Uh, so just, just putting it right where I wanted to. And it got me a little bit nervous at times. <laughs> And uh, just pulling up the horn to drop the fish in the bucket. Uh, another piece of equipment is uh, that wagon you just saw. Now you can see the end of the pier is back there, and then it's probably like a good you know, 100, 200 yards back to the car. And if you have you know a whole bunch of fish, it's just uh, it's just very heavy. So you know the wagon is definitely a must. Um, because you know, if you hit the fish, you know you need a way to carry the fish back. Yeah. You know, the the other night, I saw a guy who was carrying like a garbage can full of fish all the way back to his car. Like I felt so bad for him. Um, yeah, it, he, you know, he was just carrying on his back. He, you know, if he was there by himself, he probably had to make a couple of trips: one for the fish and one for his gear. Um, yeah, so having a wagon or something with wheels to cart the, the your catch, you know, if you catch it. If not, you know, pretty easy. <laughs> you don't need a you don't need a wagon. Um, yeah, plus the five gallon buckets to hold hold the uh, hold the fish. Um, and uh, these gloves here that I'm wearing are also really nice to have because you're working the line so much that you know, your hands would would get raw. Like Jack didn't have gloves and said his hands got pretty raw. Um, if it's kind of slow like this, if it's fishing really fast, you know, your hands would be probably fine. Um, but you know, it wasn't that that great. But there, there's that wagon, and then also these five five gallon uh, buckets with the lids. You have to have a lid, or else the fish will start uh, start wiggling and jumping out. Um, yeah, here's Jack's net. He, he has a fabric net and we're kind of sp spraying it out just because it was pulling funny. He wasn't catching as many, but he was tossing his net right on, t no, right where I was casting and he definitely had a better cast than I did. So, you know, it was probably his net, that's what I'm thinking. 
um, there's that uh, these ladies, these two women were were uh, using a, a rod and reel, and Sabiki were doing pretty good as well. That that looks a lot of fun too. I wish I, would, I had done that as well. Um, another piece of equipment that I'm so happy that I brought was this yellow rain suit, the um, kind of top and bottom. And I also have rain boots on. Uh, the night before we went to, in a, I was in jeans, um, like a regular jacket, and um, and uh, in Crocs, which is a kind of a really poor decision. Um, we we're, all, you know, my kids are dressed about the same way, and we we're all soaked, and you know, because you know, you get a little bit of wetness from the rope, and you get a little bit from the uh, from the net. Um, and then anything that you touch, we're walking in puddles. So you know, just that little bit keeps adding up until you're, you, you get pretty soaked. Uh, yeah, I, I actually bought this stuff on my way here uh, this day. <laughs> so this is day one of the, of the rain, rain, rain gear. You know, I had the boots though. And the only thing that part of me like got wet were my arms because you know, lifting up my arms, the water would run, a little bit of water would run down down the sleeves. But you know, it's much better than everything being wet. So it it was kind of like this. It was slow but steady. Um, you know, a handful of fish at a time. You no, know, every now and then somebody with a larger net would catch like a, just a really huge amount of fish in one pool. Everybody would get excited for them, which is which is kind of uh, which is kind of fun to see. Um, yeah, so this no, again, this is my first uh, first time, or first season, I should say, cast netting for herring, and I, I'm definitely hooked. You know, there's something kind of addictive about um, pulling up a net and seeing a, a bunch of fish in it like that, and you know, I definitely want to go again. You know, there's a better look at where we are. Uh, the the toughest thing I would say about herring, you know, cast netting for herring is not the cast netting itself, but actually uh, timing you you know your fishing with the uh, with the arrival of the herring when they come into spawn. Um, I've been following several forums. I've been you know, kind of watching you know, the fishing game site and. And you know, just to just to see, you know, I, I learn online uh, through a site. I think it's called Last Lost Ancho. Oops, got got a snagged here. Uh, like where to go? There are several spots that that are pretty well known. Um, probably a lot that aren't really well known. And you know, we could. You know, I would stop by. Like I used to stop by this spot on my way home from work. Um, you know, a couple of times a week uh, before you know before they, they came here just to see if they were here or not um, and that would take maybe you know five ten minutes you know, including the walk out from the car and this really this place here really isn't that far out of my way from you know where I was already on my way home um, I actually was doing this for paradise in Marin and I would stop there on my way home from work and you know it was quite a bit out of the way you know maybe a good half an hour out of the way and you know I did that a couple of times and one, thir one Thursday night I hit it right and apparently I was like the first one to um, catch herring there uh, according to the ranger uh, and then we came back and uh, I brought my kids back and wasn't that good and <laughs> we kept brought my kids back on a Saturday and it was super crowded, you know, people, you know, the word had gotten out and, um, you know, they weren't, you know, we, you know, we weren't really catching, only a few people were and people, you know, you know, people got really angry and I almost saw a fist fight, which was kind of ridiculous, but, um, you know, I thought they were going to come to blows and you know, try to step in between them to kind of diffuse it, but, you know, it's still... Uh, luckily, nothing happened, so they were just flexing. Um, yeah, so I, I kind of see everybody was kind of getting upset because nobody was catching. Uh, went back there actually the next day, and that was when 
that other video I made with my daughter casting. You know, you know, no, it wasn't it wasn't crowded and the fishing was great. Uh, and then again, we came here the night before. It was super crowded, but you know, nobody was angry because everybody was catching. So that's that's kind of a kind of a funny insight into human you know, how the human mind works, and our emotions and everything. You know, this day, everybody was happy because it wasn't as fast, but it was still everybody was still catching and everybody was happy. Um, yeah, it's a it's a really fun activity. Uh, it's very addictive. I still want to go out again. There's a couple of spots where uh, it hasn't broken open. I don't think so. I would like to go and give it a shot when they get there. My kids definitely want to go back again. Um, so if we miss it for this season, we have to wait another year. Um, but yeah, it's it's totally worthwhile. I would recommend, again, if you're a beginner like me, to get a short net like this, three foot, uh, diam three feet diameter, and uh, just practice a couple of times. Um, and then all the other stuff, like the wagon, the buckets, uh, the rain gear, um, the extra length of rope, um, yeah, and then just, just kind of keep your you know, ears open and kind of cruise the web and uh, again, that, that's the hardest part is just finding where, where they are and timing your fishing with, with that. Well, hopefully you found this video helpful, if not enjoyable. Again, I'm, I'm learning too, so if you have any tips for me, please leave it in the comments. And, you know, and I hope you get out there and, and uh, get yours, get, get your herring this, this season. So. Thanks for watching and um, happy hunting.